Okay, today we're gonna look at uh, what is called a symmetric polynomial of roots. All right. Let's take a cubic equation as an example. This RST be the roots of the cubic equation here, right? And look at these following expressions. There's a common property is that uh, if you exchange any two variables, RS, you know, or TNR, you know, it doesn't change the whole polynomial. We call this a symmetric polynomial. Earlier, of course, when we look at the power sum of the roots, they're all symmetrical, right? For example, R squared plus S squared plus T squared, they're symmetrical. Now notice that uh, and once you know one term, you pretty much can deduce the rest of the terms because it's symmetrical, right? You just exchange your variables. For example, if I give you the term r to the third uh, times s, right? So you know that in order to make a symmetrical polynomial, it must also contain terms, you know, t to the third and with with r, right? Or it, it must contain, you know, s to the third, um, and then, you know, t, it also contains r to the third t, it must contains, you know, um, all, all other combinations, right? There, you, you need to um, compete it in order to be symmetrical. If you remove any term like, like this, it won't be symmetrical, right? Because it's, it's missing this term, all right? So it turned out that, uh, and we learned that uh, the elementary symmetric polynomial where we for the three roots right rst this is sigma one which is we take just the uh, um, one of the um, roots and then add them up. for sigma two every time we take two you know from three there's three choices right and then add them up and for three we choose three there's only one way to choose three that is you know um, that's called an elementary symmetric polynomial we learned in the previous lectures, right? There's a theorem thing that for any symmetric polynomial, there's a unique representation in terms of uh, elementary polynomial. So by change of variables, you know, I can turn the original symmetric polynomial into a symmetric in terms of the sigma 1 and then sigma m. Now, in the cubic case, that would be sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. There's some polynomial we need to find. And for any symmetrical polynomial, for example, the one we're going to look at right now is this one, right? So basically, the theorem saying that there's a unique representation. We can find it, you know, but how do we find it, right? So let's talk about that. In order to do that, you know, <clears throat> We're going to introduce some terminology, you know. So when we look at these uh, terms in the polynomial, right? So in generally, if there are variable n variables, now each term is like raised to certain powers. So we're going to assume that each term, of course, sometimes there may be coefficient one or two, you know. So some coefficient terms. Each term is actually in in general, it could be x one to some power n one's power x2 to the n 2th power and xn to the n, you know, n probably is not a good word, this k to the nk power, right? So in this case, right, there is a RST. Uh, so each term, when we write it, this could become r square s square. But there's no t, but then we can make a t to the 0th power, right? So sum of the n1, n2, nk is non-negative, right? Assume that is uh, greater or equal to zero, right? And and the second term, of course, you can write it as r square and the s to the zero's power, t to the second power. Remember, we always fix the order r, s, t, x1 to xk, right? And then here, the last one would be r to the zero's power, s square and t square 
okay so what is a what is called the you know how to find this right q in terms of elementary um symmetric polynomial so we need what is called the next kind of graphical ordering of the terms so each term generically is like that with proportionally a co some coefficient c here but we say that uh, it is in the next next kind of graphical order if we always start with the highest term n1 right and then if n1 happens to the same to, you know with two terms and then we're going to choose the highest n2 terms and so on and so forth right so in this example right we're going to express it in lexicon graphical order right because in terms of r s t we're going to use the highest power of r first highest part of r is here and and here right so we need to write it and then these two terms r squared right is the same thing and then we're going to compare what is the s power oh this one wins because this one is s to the zeroth power this is s to the second power so the first term would be r squared s squared t to the zeroth power this is the first term here this is the first term and the remaining one would be this one because this one has r this one doesn't have r so the second term would be r squared right and s would be zeroth power and t to the second power and then finally it's going to be r to the zeroth power right s to the second power t to the second power so that is going to be the uh, sorry there's some typo here let's uh, let's count a graphical order right so that's we're going to treat it like that and then we're going to introduce the algorithm to find uh, this q here find the polynomial here right so how do we do that so it turned out that uh, it is iterative algorithm so we write f in this order we already did that earlier and then assume the leading term we can look at the leading term right the leading term earlier would be in our case would it be would it be this one this will be leading term right so would it be would it be r square s square t to the zeroth power so in this case what's n1 n2 nk right so n1 would equal 2 n2 equal 2 and three equals zero right and we're going to f define a polynomial in terms of elementary uh, you know um, polynomial here sigma one sigma two in our case it would be sigma three right so however the power would be the difference of the terms okay so the difference of the two and two would be zero so the first one would be sigma one to the zeros power right and then sigma 2 would be the 2 minus 0 right and 2 minus n3 from sigma 2 and 2 minus n3 which is 2 and then sigma 5 the, the last term is going to be maintaining the the power so the sigma 3 would be to the zeroth power now of course anything to the zeroth power would be equal to 1 so what we get is uh, sigma 2 square right so that's going to be our q right and then he said then you subtract q from the original polynomial if you get a zero we're done if not you're going to go back to step number one iterative steps all right so let's do that so our original f is this right the leading term is you know as we um, look at it earlier and then we figured out you know the you know the term q would be sigma two square right as we as we did earlier right this is a, this is a q so f minus q you're going to subtract it this is the original f right this is the q so with subtraction but what is the sigma 2 you know you recall that for a cubic equation sigma 1 is just the r plus s plus t and sigma 2 is going to be pairwise sum right r t plus s t and sigma 3 is just r s t right so you just plug in here right this is sigma 2 and then if you cancel the term you you get this one right okay so of course if you spot this you can notice that there's a common factor so you can just factor it out and then it's going to be rst right and then the remaining one would be r plus s plus t and that is happens to be sigma 3 this happens to be the sigma 1 
All right, this is going to be so the whole term is like that. Of course, our algorithm does not say that, right? Even though you know, in our case, we can stop saying, "Oh, we we found the you know the expression in terms of sigma one, sigma three. But let's follow the algorithm. The algorithm says, "Look at the remaining." We're going to go back to step number one because this is not zero, right? So we're going to go back to the original f. And the leading term in this case would be r square st, right? Negative 2 r square s is leading term. So we're going to re repeat here the leading term, right? Uh, you know, r st here, the s to the 1's power. So n would be what? You know, and so this n1 would be 2, n2 would be 1, n3 would be 1. So the term, corresponding term is coefficient negative 2, sigma 1, n1 minus n2 is going to be 1, and this will be 0, this will be 1. So it turns out to be to be this one, right? Which is the same as when we, when we look at it earlier, right? Which is the same thing, right? However, let's follow the algorithm. The algorithm says that you add this to the q, original q is this, you're going to add this negative 2 e1 e3, right? And uh, sorry, this will be sigma. There's a time out here because sometimes people use e to represent the elementary, right? Sigma in our, in our notation, this would be sigma two square minus two sigma one sigma three, all right? So let's um, follow the algorithm. The algorithm said you're gonna subtract the q, right? This is our q. You you're gonna subtract that, right? You subtract that, and then this negative like becomes positive. And then this happens to cancel everything. Everything would be zero. So now you can stop, right? So you find the Q, which is which is this one. And uh, so in other words, the conclusion is that uh, um, this polynomial P right, or F can be expressed in terms of Q, sigma one, sigma two, sigma three. That that is sigma 2 square minus 2 sigma 1 sigma 3 right so you can try some other um, symmetric polynomial using this algorithm for example earlier we do the power sum right like s3 equal r to the third power plus s to the third power plus t to the third power right or s2 equal r square plus s square plus uh, t square right you can find what is corresponding q, right? What is it? What is the q here, right? In this case, maybe easy, um, because it's actually uh, sigma one square uh, minus two sigma two, right? And, but you can follow the algorithm and uh, and you know, derive the same answer here, right? For this one, you can use this as an exercise to figure it out, right? And as a matter of fact, there's another exercise. Which is what is called the discriminant of the um, polynomial, right? So for cubic equation, in generally we have uh, b c d coefficient, r c b is the rules. So this is symmetrical, right? Let's call this is a discriminant, right? This is delta is symmetrical, right? And then there must be a q, right? You can follow the algorithm to find the q. Notice that. Uh, um, when this term equals to zero, it means what? It means r minus s or r minus t or s minus t. One of them must be zero, right? At least one of them must be zero. In other words, some rules are identical. So um, in this case, you may have uh, two identical rules if and only if delta discriminant is zero. Now, we leave this as an exercise to find out what is polynomial in terms of the you know, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. Um, of course, one thing you notice that uh, in, in this case, if the equation RST is for the, um, is, uh, um, if this equation is, is x to the third power plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals 0, earlier we know that what is sigma 1, right? So sigma 1 would be negative b, sigma 2 would equal to c, sigma 3 would equal negative d, right? So in this polynomial, you can just plug in and say that this whole thing would equal to a sigma 2, which is a c square, right? c square minus 
2 sigma 1 is negative b sigma 3 is negative uh, d right and then c square minus 2 b d right in terms of coefficient and here when you do it you can also express in terms of b and c and d so we leave this as an exercise or you can check out our next video you know, to, to work out this um, problem. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.